Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. As you know, we've been delving into the topic of chronic constipation over the last two posts. In summary, we had talked about the movement of the colon, what causes constipation, how we evaluate it, and today I was going to focus a little bit more on the different treatment aspects of it. But before I get into that, I wanted to kind of walk through this algorithm on this slide, uh, this is how we generally approach chronic constipation based off our last two discussions. First, of course, it's important to get a good history and review some basic blood work to make sure the thyroid levels in the body, the calcium levels in the body, all of those are okay. Sometimes it's important to make sure that there is no bowel obstruction so therefore a colonoscopy may sometimes be indicated in the evaluation. After all of this is done, then we are getting into the realm of whether the colon is actually moving slow or if it is a problem right at the opening where there's that flap mechanism that I've described to you in the previous videos, if there's a problem with that and that group of problems is called defecation disorder. From the standpoint of that evaluation, the first step may be to increase the fiber in the diet. Many times, because of modern day diet, we're not getting enough fiber and therefore there's not enough bulk in the stool. The recommendation is anything between 20 to 30 grams of fiber per day, which is a significant amount. And I think there's benefits to getting it in a plant-based form rather than artificial fiber, because there's a whole host of other things that come when you eat a plant-based diet, such as kale, spinach, beets, carrots, blueberries, raspberries, walnuts, etc. But the key number seems to be to get about 20 to 30 grams of fiber per day. If that approach doesn't work, then the second approach at that time would be to then study uh, the, uh, a, the flap mechanism at the bottom, and which is what I've described as when the colon starts moving, the colon and the rectum start straightening out, the sphincter releases, and then one has a bowel movement. So therefore, we are studying that area by means of what we call a balloon test or manometric test to see if that mechanism is somehow uh, been disordered. Sometimes we use through part of that a balloon expulsion test where a balloon is inserted and one is asked to push that out, and we get various information through these uh, three um, aspects of it. If it is a defecation disorder, the treatment I'll cover is, is different, but if it is not, then we can approach it through medicines. What I wanted to do on this next slide uh, is to talk about commercially available fiber products. Uh, but before we hit commercially available fiber products, I would encourage people to eat more of a plant-based diet and to get a lot of the fiber that way. There's two types of fiber, such as soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is things such as oat bran, nuts, barley, etc. Uh, and insoluble fiber is things like wheat bran. As I mentioned, there's a lot of advantage of getting plant-based fiber, which is that there's antioxidants with it, there's cholesterol lowering effects of it. All of these help in other things besides the constipation side of it. There are three or four commercially available ones which include methylcellulose, psyllium, uh, which is uh, metamucil, guar gum, which is benafiber. Some of these may be helpful uh, in uh, promoting gut movement. There's of course other forms of laxatives that we use uh, the predominant one that we as gastroenterologists recommend is Miralax, which is polyethylene glycol powder. Basically what this does is allows more water to stay in the gut. Any of these other ones such as milk of magnesia or magnesium citrate or magnesium sulfate, they promote a bowel movement by pulling more water in, but I wouldn't recommend them as definitely first line. I think you need to talk to your doctor regarding it. We had used sometimes uh, fleets enemas which actually help by also uh, pulling more water into the gut but those are things that we use say when one comes in here or in the hospital setting i wouldn't recommend that in the outpatient setting there are other agents 
such as cascara uh, or senna. These are things that stimulate the gut movement. Again, I would not recommend that. I'm just trying to give you a sense of what's out there. Mineral oil or stool softeners such as docusate. Docusate is like a detergent and it just actually softens the stool. And uh, the medications that we then use are medications such as lubiprostone, which is called amitesia. And on this next slide, you have other agents that we try such as linces, which is common, trulans, and then plicanotide, as well as other medications such as uh, tegacerod, which help in move the, moving the gut. So again, a foundational item would be drinking enough water along with taking good plant-based diet. If that doesn't work, these commercially available fiber products we can, can be sometimes used. If that doesn't work, we go into this medications uh, in general, but the others, I just wanted to give you a sense of what's out there. And lastly, uh, if it is a problem with the mechanism at the bottom in terms of the colon straightening out and the anus relaxing, biofeedback training uh, can be sometimes helpful. That's where the body is then hooked up to a computer and we train the body to relax and to kind of get back into touch with the natural rhythm of how that area works. But that's called, that's for more the defecation disorder part of it. And uh, if it is a slow movement aspect of it, these are the things that are available. But before we do that, a good evaluation to make sure there's nothing wrong in the biochemistry or the blood and nothing wrong in the colon as an acute in terms of obstruction, etc., are important things to remember. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we we'll hope to see you again next week.